Ben and go ahead. Thanks, Ben. And good afternoon, folks. I um, I'm Shamia Fagan, she, her pronouns. And I just, before we get started, I know this has nothing to do with this press conference, but um, I know many of you are parents or grandparents or aunts and uncles of elementary school kids. And I am a mom of an elementary school kid just down the street. And it is, um, I haven't seen all the news reports. You probably all know more than me, but um, I, I did read that there was a, a news reports of a shooting at an elementary school in Texas. And um, I just wanna acknowledge that uh, it's just incredibly difficult to hear. I know for all of us, um, and, and they're just it just hits differently too for folks who have a kid at, sitting at an elementary school right now. So I just wanted to take a moment first, um, just as a community and just acknowledge that. Uh, so thank you. So we are here to talk about Clackamas County. And I know that there are a lot of questions about the timing of election results in Clackamas County. And as your Secretary of State, I want um, the largest takeaway to be my assurance that every vote will be counted and every voice will be heard. And I have every expectation that I will certify an accurate election in Clackamas County. And to begin with, I just wanna directly address the call that I've seen in, in various places by some folks or questions about whether or not I can quote, take over the election in Clackamas County. So stated frankly, to do so would be in violation of state law. And it would also conflict with my constitutional responsibility to oversee and audit the election results in Clackamas. In addition to that, it would cause uncertainty by risking a summer of lawsuits over whether the results of an election conducted by someone other than the county clerk was a lawfully conducted election. So um, I have acted since the moment that we have known about this within my maximum legal authority to provide detailed instructions, security plan review and oversight. We have also offered extensive personnel support and will continue to do so to make sure that Oregon voters have accurate results by the statutory deadline. And we have been and will continue to be closely involved. As I mentioned, state law ORS 246.200 provides that only the county clerk uh, that the county clerk is the only elections official who conduct this election. And I am deeply committed to acting within my full authority, but I will not step beyond that. Oregon law requires that county clerks conduct elections in this state. And I respect the will of the voters and we do not have the authority to take control or take over any county's election tally in this situation. Um, and so since the moment that we learned about the problem with the blurry barcodes on the ballots in Clackamas County, which was May 3rd, within 24 hours, we reached out and offered assistance. At that time, we were asked to help the county set up their ballot correction process, this duplication process that many of you have now heard about and reported on. We were asked for help to set that up in a secure manner. We inquired about availability of resources at that time to complete that work. And the Clackamas County clerk reported at that time that they had sufficient resources in the county to complete the work by the deadline. So to the best of our knowledge, the process we discussed with them um, at that time was and is being used. The secretary, um, I have deployed a senior staff to observe every single day. We have been on site at the Clackamas County Elections Office every day since the day before the election. I was personally there on election day. And um, at a meeting on May 12th um, that you all covered and saw, the county clerk assured the county commission that they would certify results on time. And we did not receive any additional or contrary information from the clerk. On Monday, May 16th, as I mentioned, the day before the election, the uh, Oregon Elections Division, the deputy observed the process at Clackamas County Elections and did raise concerns to me about staffing levels. So we then offered to provide additional resources at that time, including sending our own staff, facilitating support from other counties and providing experienced managers who know how to quickly stand up a large operation. Uh, that help was not accepted. On Tuesday, May 17th on election day, again, I personally went and toured Clackamas County to observe the process in person. We again offered this assistance in writing. On Tuesday evening, when the initial results were reported, 
uh, it was very surprising and disappointing that the county had not uh, adequately staffed up to tally the number of ballots it was receiving, despite our best efforts to help. Um, the amount of ballots that they had tallied that night was a question I had asked them multiple times, three that I can recall while I was just on site election day, and they simply would not and could not give us an answer. So the amount of ballots that they had actually processed on election night came as a disappointment, not only to me, but I know to many people who had been told that they had resources that they needed to get this done. So in the following days, we have done uh, several things to help them get on track. We offered Clerk Sherry Hall the assistance of elections experts from the Oregon Elections Division in an advisory role. We provided the clerk with information in an email on how to estimate her operations capacity and create a timeline for the work. We made available additional staffing resources, both state employees and other county staff who were available other, from other counties were available and trained in election processes. So um, on Friday, after not hearing back about any of the multiple offers of assistance we had offered, we then sent a formal legal instruction to the clerk to provide us with a plan and a timeline for completing their work. That's uh, the, the ability to offer an instruction is something that I have the statutory authority to do. So. Over the weekend, I have been um, speaking with previous secretaries of state. I've actually spoken with every previous secretary of state, except for uh, Secretary Bradbury. We've been playing phone and talking, but have not reached him yet. Um, and elections division staff to prepare for every potential outcome. I wanted to speak with other previous secretaries just to make sure that I was using the incredible resources that are out there to have people thinking about this unique challenge. And then last night, I convened a summit with the county clerk, Sherry Hall, a chair, Tootie Smith of Clackamas County, and the county personnel who are deeply involved with this election. It was a productive meeting. I continued to push them and will continue to push them to provide a written plan with regular benchmarks so that I and you and the public can confirm that they are on track to produce timely results. At the summit, we did receive a verbal report, which included progress on ballot duplication, progress on overall ballot processing and staffing for the next week. Um, in order to provide the full plan and timeline we requested and, and demanded, the county asked for an additional day so they could use the, the throughput that they had from yesterday. So the first day of fully staffed ballot duplication efforts was yesterday, and they wanted to have all of that throughput So in order to estimate their completion date. So we expect to be provided that today, and we will continue, um, continue to follow up with them to make sure that we get that. So um, as I mentioned, we are evaluating all options to navigate towards our North Star, which is accurate election results from Clackamas County by June 13th. And what Clackamas voters and Oregon voters deserve is accuracy and certainty. And the best way to get accuracy and certainty is for the legally authorized county clerk to complete this election on time. And that is my North Star. And finally, my role as secretary is to interpret state law and make sure counties apply it uniformly to assist and advise the clerks. I do have the statutory authority, as I mentioned, to issue instructions to counties and ensure that the election is processed accurately, securely, and within the statutory deadline. And uh, there are a few things that we consider when we intervene in a county election. First, the voters deserve certainty, as I mentioned. Inter intervention from my office um, you know, is something that is, is, an, is an issue that obviously we, we want to avoid when we can, because those are independent offices. Um, we've been providing that assistance within the full maximum support that we're allowed to provide by law. But we've been very clear about where that bright line is, which is that I do not have the legal authority under the Constitution or Oregon law to conduct an election in Clackamas County. And so I've made sure that we do not step over that line, that we stay in a support and oversight role um, that we don't step into their territory because the voters deserve that certainty when those election results come out they deserve the certainty of those election results so with that um, that's kind of where i wanted to, to walk i'm happy to walk through anything um, the work that we've done but with that i'm happy to take questions then thank you secretary fagan so we'll open it up at this point to questions and i'm going to go in the order that i saw hands go up. Um, and the first one I saw was from Genevieve. Genevieve, go ahead. Sorry, having some trouble unmuting there. Thank you for taking our questions today. I sincerely appreciate it. Secretary Fagan, we know that Sherry Hall has been the elections clerk here in Clackamas County since 2003. She has been in this position for nearly two decades, and this is not the first mistake under her watch. Are you going to call for her resignation? 
So I'm a, I'm a Clackamas County resident, and obviously I found this incredibly frustrating and quite frankly, just outrageous. And my North Star, though, as Secretary of State for the whole state is to land this plane. And right now, the only person legally authorized to land this plane under Oregon law is the clerk. And so as long as she's the clerk, I will continue to work directly with her um, to make sure that we get these election results to my office uh, by the deadline of June 13th. We know that she's also up for re-election coming in November. So is there a timeline here? And is resignation, asking for her resignation, something you would consider after June 13th? Right. I mean, I'm just not, like I said, I, um, I've been focused on the North Star of working with her and I'm not going to do anything that muddies the waters or makes it more complicated to work with her. We need to get these election results to Clackamas voters, to Oregon voters by June 13th. Um, but, you know, obviously this is a, an elected position. One of, of the three big counties in Oregon, Clackamas, Multnomah, and Washington, the three biggest in the Tri-County area. Clackamas is the only one with an elected clerk. Um, and so obviously voters will have their say in November. And just one other question here, because we just got a new video that shows what happened inside the elections office on May 19th. There is video now showing that Clerk Hall conferred with an election staffer inside the building before letting in an observer with Representative Schrader. This happened about 7.30 in the morning. Now, Jamie McLeod Skinner observer was not allowed into the building until 8.30. Clerk Hall previously said she had no idea how this observer got into the building knowing now that she was aware of what happened and talked with the staffer before letting in that observer what's your reaction i just want to jump in real quick and say that we do want to keep these one question per person so that all of your colleagues have a chance to ask their questions but secretary since this is important please please go ahead and answer and then we'll move on thanks ben Genevieve, I just saw the video that you mentioned. I saw it uh, just literally as I was preparing for this press conference. And so I'm somewhat reacting in real time, but um, it's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous to stand in front of the public and to say one thing and then to have a video showing something very different. So I'm incredibly frustrated um, and uh, yeah, incredibly disappointed. And I find it outrageous um, that, that the facts came out and it looks to, to be contradictory of what she said uh, to the public during a press availability um, just late last week. Thank you. Thanks. Next hand I saw was Lisa Balick. Lisa, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Secretary, with concerns about transparency throughout this process and concerns now growing even greater, why was the summit last night that you had with the county clerk and elected officials in Clackamas County, why was that not an open meeting to the public? Uh, thanks, Lisa. So first off, I want to be clear, there was only one county commissioner there, Chudy, uh, Chair Tootie Smith. There are a couple other county commissioners who were on the ballot and also um, having too many of them um, in the room would make would make it where we needed to um, to open it up. And one of the biggest things that we talked about in the meeting was their security plan, which is something that is not a public document because it's obviously something that we need to I need to review. But even in our office, we keep those on a secure server because they're highly highly sensitive documents. And so one of the primary topics of the conversation, the summit that we had yesterday was their security plan and updates to their security plan to make sure that um, to make sure that we had that security and accuracy of the of the um, of the election results. Just a quick follow, then why not put out the information that was discussed beyond security or allow public in that part? I mean, like I said, if, you know, any, if you have any questions about what we discussed beyond the security plan, as I mentioned, they gave us a timeline, um, but we wanted to have a productive meeting with them um, and, and to be able to, to ask hard questions about what they had and everything that, that they're going to be able to tell us from that meeting is going to be out in that written plan. They actually asked us at the end of the meeting, does that, does that suffice? Are we good? And we said, no, you, we need a written plan, a written plan that we can give to the, give to the media and give to the public. And so we still continue to demand that written plan. We have not seen it yet that I'm aware of at two o'clock, uh, 215 today. Um, but the, the, the primary things, the majority of the discussion there was over um, topics like their security plan. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, the next hand I saw was Mike Benner from KGW. Mike, go ahead. Yes, Secretary, thank you again uh, for talking with us today. Circling back to uh, Genevieve's uh, question to start this off, I understand and appreciate you're not calling for Clerk Hall's um, uh, resignation per se, but you know, considering all of these issues uh, with her in office, this this latest one being perhaps the biggest issue, um, some 
behavior that can only be described as bizarre uh, in the wake of it, um, not telling the full truth, perhaps just yesterday, kind of walking by our cameras, putting the paper over her face, trying to hide. I mean, it's one thing for you not to call for a resignation. What I'm curious to know is, do you think she is fit to hold this position? My North Star, again, is to work with the legally authorized clerk, which at this point is her. Um, we're just a few weeks away from that deadline. And so at this point, in my role as Secretary of State, um, I want to continue to work with her. At this point, the people that are also in the room, again, the summit that we had last night included um, Chair Tootie Smith, uh, who has been incredibly helpful. She and I have worked hand in hand to make sure that the county, the elections office has all the resources that they need. Um, and to make sure that there's the oversight. So what I provide as Secretary of State is that oversight so that folks, regardless of their feelings about Chair Hall, or excuse me, Clerk Hall, or, or what, what their feelings are or their trust in her, they can have trust in the process by knowing that we are there in our oversight role. And then most importantly, after those results are submitted to us on June 13th, I don't certify those results for another 10 days on June 23rd, because I then conduct post-election reviews and audits to make sure um, that those election results are secure and accurate before I certify that election on June 23rd. And that is my North Star right now, is making sure that we get those accurate election results to Oregon voters so we don't have a summer full of lawsuits about what happened in that election. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next question I see is from KPTV. I believe it's Simon. Yeah, hi, uh, Secretary Fagan. Uh, what is your level of confidence that these votes will be counted by that June 13th deadline? And what would happen if they weren't? So, as I said, we received kind of a written update. Yes, or excuse me, I misspoke. We received a verbal update yesterday in this summit. Um, and it, it didn't have hard numbers yet. And so we still are waiting for that plan. I will definitely, we, and we will give that to you when we have that. I'm very eager to see that plan because that will give us the confidence to have those benchmarks so we can all watch and see them meeting those benchmarks and have that confidence. And so at this point, I'm in the trust but verify um, you know, category. And so it is time for us to see that written plan. We have been demanding it for several days now and uh, heard some things yesterday that were encouraging and I would call productive. But until we see that written plan, we need to be able, there's no accountability. That plan will show us where they expect to be every single day. And we can all watch and hold them accountable if they hit those benchmarks every single day. Because those benchmarks are gonna then lead them to have these election results certified on or before the statutory deadline. Uh, just real quick, respectfully, Secretary, I don't think you answered the question. What what happens if oh, right. those aren't counted? My apologies. I simply forgot the second part of the question. Thanks for restating it. So um, under the Oregon Constitution, I do have the authority um, to make sure that every vote is counted. In Oregon, the voters have the right to have their vote counted. Um, state statute, state law doesn't say anything about this, but again, the state constitution um, does give voters the right to have their vote counted. So if the county was not finished by June 13th, I will order them to continue counting every vote. Every vote is going to be counted. Every voice is going to be heard. Um, at that point, if they did not reach um, the deadline by June 13th, they would be out of compliance with state law, which means likely that I would need to, um, to go to a judge and have a lawsuit would, would to actually demand to have that judge force them to continue counting every vote. Um, but Oregonians have a constitutional right to have their vote counted, and I'm going to make sure that that right is upheld. Thanks for that jumping in there again, Simon. We want to make sure we got both of those answered. Uh, next hand I see is Jamie Goldberg. Uh, Jamie, go ahead. Um, I just had two questions. You, in terms of um, the timeline that you mentioned that they need to submit today, just for clarifying purposes, is there a specific deadline um, today, end of business day, at 12 a.m. that you gave um, the county to submit that timeline and will you be releasing it to the public when it's submitted? And then the second question I had is we know that, that uh, there was a complaint uh, filed last week um, regarding uh, the Schrader staffer allowed into the off the uh, to watch ballot counting early. Have any other complaints been filed to the Secretary of State's office um, regarding the counting um, and at Clackamas County? Thanks. I'll, I'll take both of those, but if I don't catch uh, one, please do pop back in and make sure I do. So the first question was, 
Uh, sorry, what was, remind me of the first question I was focusing on the second, let me and answer the complaints one first, and then you can restate the other question. So yes, um, as many of you've already reported, Jamie McLeod Skinner's campaign filed a complaint with the elections division after the campaign staff, uh, alleging that the campaign staff from Kurt Schrader's campaign was allowed into the building when staff from her campaign were not in. And uh, that's going to be investigated in the normal in the normal course. We have a compliance specialist who does investigate those complaints. And so that is currently uh, being processed. Um, allowing people into the building without checking them in was also one of their allegations. Allowing people to be in the building unsupervised and excluding observers were all a potential were, are all potential violations of Clackamas County security plan. So that investigation is underway and will take time to complete. I'm going to have Ben follow up with you. I know that there has been some reports about whether there have been other complaints, but I want to make sure, I think if I think there may have been one other one, but I want to make sure that you have that, because those are all in writing and signed, so Ben can get you those um, in a follow-up. I just want to make sure I give you that accurate. And then, Jamie, do you mind um, restating the first part of your question again? Yeah, just in terms of the timeline you're ex expecting Clackamas County to give you today, is there a specific deadline that you set for them to give you that timeline um, today? And uh, once you receive it, will you then uh, release it in full to the media? So first off, absolutely, we'll be releasing that to the media. I believe that your role and the public's role in that is that public accountability of having those benchmarks. And to be clear, the deadline for that was last week was when we wanted it. And so, um, you know, yesterday they said they would have it to us. They didn't. We're waiting for it for today. And so, um, you know, certainly would, would like to see that. I, they may, you know, they, they may have a whole other day of throughputs they want to put in it. But at some point, even if the plan gets adjusted, we need to see that plan because you need to see that plan and the public needs to see that plan because at this point, um, in order to get to that June 13th deadline, we need to see benchmarks, we need to see fulfilling of those benchmarks, and that public accountability that will be able to say whether or not they meant those benchmarks, and if they didn't, what other resources can they ask for and can we deploy to make sure that the voters of Oregon and the voters of Clackamas County get election, get accurate election results by the statutory deadline on June 13th. And sorry, I, and I, I don't think I heard that in there. Is there a specific time that that time has to reach you guys today? Again, it was due last week. And so, you know, we, it, it was supposed to, you know, we wanted it last week. We wanted this, uh, you know, as soon as we could start tracking. And so, and they said they would have it yesterday. They didn't. So, you know, I don't know when they were going to have it today, but we are going to constantly check. I imagine Ben would give me a heads up if we had it right now, but it's, um, you know, we will, we will get it to you as soon as we get it. That is a priority for us because uh, accountability is key here and the public deserves the transparency to know what those counts are going to be every single day to get this election um, accurately reported by June 13th. Yeah, thank you, Secretary. I know folks have deadlines in the evening that they um, need to work with. So uh, if you want to reach me for an update, um, I will be around. I can give you real-time information on whether or not we have uh, the plan. Uh, Anthony, I think I saw your hand next. Yeah, hey, how are you? Good, Anthony. Thanks for doing this. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. When did you first hear about a problem in Clackamas County? I believe it was on May 3rd is what I have in my notes. Um, that's May 3rd. So yeah, it would have been right around that date. And it did, who called you or who, who alerted you? I believe I heard about it from either my chief of staff or the elections director. I don't, there's been so much conversation about it. It's hard to remember the very first conversation, but I, I did not speak directly to Sherry Hall about it. She let, I believe she let our elections director know about it. And I heard about it from either her or my chief of staff, but right away. Okay. And then what was the first day that you offered um, assistance? Um. Th that next day. So within 24 so hours, we had reached out. Yes. Okay. Um, and then does this, this problem, it seems to be only affecting the Democratic ballot, as I understand it. Is that why the Republican votes are coming in so much faster in Clackamas County than the Democratic ones? That's a question. Because they are. Yeah. Yeah. Have you looked at that? I'm sorry for interrupting. Anthony, go ahead. My no. apologies. Oh, no, no, just that the numbers are about four times as large for the counting of the Republican ballots than the Democratic ballots. And, you know, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist or anything, but it, it, is that so is that is that because of the error only affected the Democratic ballot? Do we think? 
So I'll tell you what I what I know, which is not going to be all the information. But what I do know is that um, it appears from the county there are more Democratic ballots, but that, that all ballot types were impacted. In fact, the PCP ballots, I mean, it appears that both mm. Republican and Democratic PCPs have a pretty high rate. So if you just think about it um, pragmatically, this, the, the issue was the, I think, the color of the toner in yeah. one of the printers from the print machine, right? So these, these three different printers, I believe, were printing out these ballots. And of course, you know, they're going to print them out in sets, right? So if all if, if a certain number of ballots happen to be going through the one printer that was putting in the blurry barcodes, then it would make sense, not from a conspiracy standpoint, just from a pragmatic standpoint, that those ballots are going to be more impacted than ballots that were being printed, maybe a different ballot type that was being printed on another computer. So, so far, no concern about the rate at which these two sets of ballots are coming in to Clackamas County. No, I mean, again, that part of it, the ballots coming in is coming in in the, in the normal course. And again, even the duplication of the ballots is happening in a batch. So for example, not to be too far in the weeds, but um, when a batch gets run through, let's say it's 127 ballot batch. Some of those are gonna get kicked out because they have bad barcodes, but that whole batch is waiting to then be processed until those ballots are duplicated using the secure transparent process. Then the duplicated ballots are put back in that stack, and then they're run through the computer again to make sure it's still exactly 127 ballots that come out on the other end. And so they're not doing the duplicated ballots separately from the other ballots. They're all still running together in those batches um, in, in, in to make sure that they're being accurately reported. Great. Last thing, um, have you had any other reports of problems uh, with printing from Moonlight BPO? I think they have some other clients in Oregon. I have not personally received those notes. And again, you know, there's 36 independent election offices across Oregon. That's one of the, the safeguards built into our system is that there isn't one printer for the whole state that the county clerks and the county elections offices go out and pick their own printers. And so as, as far as I know that the Clackamas is the only county that was using this printer. I think we can all be thankful for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not aware of any, I haven't been in any direct contacts with the, the printers there personally, um, because again, it's, it's a contract between them and Clackamas County, but I'm not aware of any additional um, you know, errors from the, from the printing company. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. On the next hand I see is from Tyson. Tyson, go ahead. Uh, Tyson, News Channel 21, Bend, Oregon. Is there going to be any uh, consequences or liabilities for the uh, print shop that produced the defective envelopes and ballots? That's obviously between them and Clackamas County. Those are the two parties to that contract. Thank you. Thank you, Tyson. Uh, the next hand I see is Sarah Klein with the Associated Press. Hi, yes, um, I'm also trying to understand the delay in Democratic ballot results being reported. So were the Democrat ballots disproportionately impacted by this blurry barcode issue? And then also, um, I'm just seeing if there's an estimate of how much this will cost the county. In terms of the estimate to the cost, um, that's going to have to be a question for the county commission who funds elections. But in terms of the printer, um, so, you know, the, the printers run these PDFs one by one, but in batches, and um, it appears, again, from the, they, they don't know the full amount of ballots yet, but I, I think that it appears that the problem was occurring when the printer was running the Democratic and nonpartisan print runs is when that toner was an issue, which would be why so many of the ballots make up a larger portion of the ballots that needed to be fixed. So again, um, it's from a practical understanding, you can get it. There were multiple printers. One of the printers had the toner problem and it just happens to be that it was during the print runs for the Democratic and nonpartisan print runs. Cause in Oregon, um, you know, in the, in, we haven't closed primaries. And so there's different, you know, Republicans get a certain ballot, Democrats get a certain ballot and then nonpartisan folks get a certain ballot. And then within each of those, there's hundreds of ballot styles for what city and you know, what area, what congressional district and legislative district that folks are in. And so um, it does appear that it, that the toner problem happened during the Democratic, during uh, ballot styles that included Democratic and nonpartisan print runs. But as I mentioned, we learned last night that the PCP ballots for the Republican and Democratic parties also both have a high rejection rate. And then if I could just ask one more question, um, in your conversations with Sherry Hall ever since the beginning, have you found that she genuinely thought she could complete this and was simply overwhelmed or have you found that she's been uh, resistant and non-responsive? 
So my goal all along has to has been to stay within my legal authority and to in no way encroach on hers. And so all of the support that we have been offering has had to be consented to. She, they've had to accept the help. So I would say early on, particularly when I was there the day of, um, she was very grateful to have me there. I was there observing at that point the process to make sure that that duplication of ballots, which is a new process that many Oregonians don't know happens every election when there's you know coffee spilled or something on a ballot, but this was obviously happening on a larger scale than ever before. So I was in there and she was very grateful to have me in there again three different times during that meeting. I said, so tonight's election night, what percentage do you expect of the ballots that you've received to have counted? And they kept saying, we have no idea until we hit that tally button. And so um, that obviously was concerning. And so at that point, we started following up in writing where I would say the tone became more tense. Um, but again, we had to, at that point, once we realized that they had not been processing at the rate that they had needed to and had not been offering us or Clackamas County that information when asked, it became clear that I needed to work within my authority to provide written instructions, which I have the legal authority to do. Um, and that I would say at that point, the, the conversation became more tense because that oversight role was stepping in, but continuing to offer collaboration um, and you know continuing to have our staff there. Like I said, we've had a senior elections official on site every single day. Um, to oversee the process, as well as we've had a number of our staff volunteer to go over and duplicate ballots. We had folks from audits, archives, corporation, all of our different divisions over there just working front lines over the weekend um, to help duplicate those ballots. Thanks again. Um, let's see, I think the next question is from Julia Shumway. Apologies if I missed anybody. Yeah, I, I had a question again about your statutory authority here. You're able to, in, are, are you able to instruct um, clerk hall or any other county clerks to accept assistance or, or do you have to make that an offer not an instruction? And if that's the case, do you see, do, does it seem to you like this may be an area that the legislature might need to look at um, for some kind of tweaks in the future to prevent another situation where a county clerk could need help and then deny it and slow down an election or election results in the future? Julia, I'm going to start with the second question first. Uh, certainly the outrage that you've seen from Representative Janelle Bynum, for example, um, she's particularly concerned about how this will affect voters of color who want to have trust in the process. Um, and, you know, she's trying, she said, I'm trying to get the voter turnout numbers up in these, you know, amongst voters of color and immigrant voters. And yet when you have a process like this, it can be incredibly, um, you know, it can dampen that enthusiasm when the process doesn't look trustworthy. So I definitely think you'll see the legislature looking at whether this is a structure that works for such a large county. As I said earlier, of the three in the tri-county area, only Clackamas has an independently elected clerk. Washington County and Multnomah County have a clerk who is accountable to the, the committee who is actually an employee and appointed. And obviously that county commission can have more authority over them in situations like this. Uh, the Clackamas County Commission, and I've worked very, very closely and been in contact nearly every day with Chair Tootie Smith. And we're in a similar position where we can offer support and we can offer help, um, but she doesn't have any more authority to take over um, than the Secretary of State does. And so I think that's something the legislature is gonna have to grapple with, whether this is a model that works for such a large county. And then um, back to your first question, uh, which was about um, whether the support can be demanded. Um, you know, again, our legal instructions, while they are legally binding, I can't force her to comply with them absent going to court with, again, my goal has been, you know, the least chaos as possible to get this election accurately recorded by June 13th. And so certainly going to court to enforce instructions would not be something that I would want to do unless it was absolutely necessary at this point, um, you know, would cause more chaos than, um, than just working with her. So our instructions have been very detailed there and the instructions are a public record. So you're certainly welcome to request those from Benny's happy to provide the instructions in the written communications that we've given. Um, but the instructions are um, provided to, you know, to really help them do the processing and to give us certain benchmarks, um, whether or not we could force them to accept help. Um, I think there would probably be a legal battle over whether that was an appropriate instruction because again the instructions still expect that she is an independently elected official who is the only one under statute charged with you know the actual <clears throat> conducting of the election but i can have ben follow up if i um if i didn't quite 
get that thoroughly, Julia, because it sounds like potentially a legal question um, that I would need to probably talk with our lawyer about um, the full authority of the instructions. But we have certainly provided a very, very detailed written instructions asking for timelines, asking for calculations of how many ballots per hour they were duplicating for how many pairs, um, et cetera. And again, have been asking for that detailed plan since last week. Thanks, Julia. Um, next up is Alex. Alex, go ahead. Hi, yeah, you said that you spoke with previous secretaries of state um, over the past couple of days to get their perspective on, um, on what's been going on. I'm curious if any of them pointed to previous instances of this kind of delay happening when they were in your office um, and what other kind of advice they, they gave you. Yeah, thank you. And I, I, like I said, I was able to speak with every previous Secretary of State, I spoke with Bev Clarno actually right before um, this call today. She and I had played phone tag and I didn't reach Bill Bradbury. He's the only one that I didn't speak with, but I did. Uh, and I also spoke with Rich Vile, who was um, Secretary Clarno's deputy yesterday. And the, uh, you know, all of them, I, I said, look, you know, I'm new at this. I want to, you know, I want to be humble and say this is a, this is a, a unique challenge. Um, if I'm missing anything, I said, I want to be humble. Please let me know. And they said, we think you're doing exactly what you can do. I floated with them this idea of people saying I should take over. I said, from what I can tell, I have no legal authority to do that. I said, but I want to confirm with you. And all of them agreed. No, your role is oversight. You can't both conduct an election and then also go in and audit that election, right? Our, my authority, my constitutional responsibility is to audit and provide that oversight. So um, I appreciated all of their counsel. They all appreciated me calling them, um, but all of them agreed that we're doing everything that we can do. And they expressed empathy for um, the situation, how frustrating it is, but uh, none of them had dealt with anything quite like this on this scale before. Um, they obviously have their own war stories from when they were Secretary of State, but they all certainly expressed alarm at, um, at, at this particular um, situation in Clackamas County. And um, I have said, hey, if you think of anything, you know, I called them all on my cell phone, said, call me anytime. Um, but those have been very productive conversations, but mostly just validating that we have been looking at all the options and all the angles and really haven't been missing anything. If there's more we could do, we will be doing it and, and we will do it. Um, but we, again, we have to keep that bright line to make sure that we give Oregonians that trust that this is a legally conducted election. The only person who can do that is the, is the clerk. Thank you, Alex. Um, so I, I see one more hand from Jamie. Jamie, do you have a follow-up question or is that still up from before? Sorry, that's still up from before. No worries. Um, we have a, another couple of minutes. Uh, if there are follow-up questions, um, we do want to try to get to everyone. I think we need to pull away at 2.45. Um, but if there are follow-up questions, now would be the time. I see a hand from Sarah. Hi, yeah, so at this point, has Sherry accepted your help for um, additional employees? And if so, how many employees are there in total over there now? So I think the, the broad answer is she has accepted our help. Um, I will also note that she has accepted help from the county. Um, and that's where uh, the county administrator, I think, is um, is providing a lot of a lot of support. In fact, our HR person connected with the HR person at the county to kind of streamline between our two um, our two entities. And so, I believe in just a you know a, a call out that we had just uh, late last week. I think we had a dozen people over there this weekend. Um, we have more people signing up to work nights and weekends. I can we can get you um, again. Our HR person is kind of giving me an update every every day of how many folks are going over there. And again, these are folks from elections, archives, audits, corporation, executive. We just have said, look, this is a top priority. We need to get this done. So what we did learn yesterday in the summit and that we expect to have um, in writing uh, today in their written plan is that they actually, for the space they have, because again, they can't just do this anywhere, right? There has to be a secure observable location where ballots are being where ballots are being handled. And so they only have so much space. So they have said that within the space that they have and that they can secure in accordance with their security plan, again, that we provide oversight, um, they're about at the maximum that they can have. And I know that the county yesterday also sent out um, another email asking for help. So um, we've also uh, identified other you know, places where employees could come from if they end up with any kind of downswing. But at this point, um, they said they could maybe take four or five more people, but at that point they're gonna be at capacity. And so again, the, the written plan that we have been asking for since last week that we are expecting 
today and, and will continue to to expect is going to um, lay out what their you know what their benchmarks can be every day based on what they expect their capacity to be and in any I've, we've told them look if we need more folks to fill in um, we can use you know our folks are willing we have other places where we have already built in contingency plans for being able to have other people so that's the one thing that we're trying to do is kind of think about the what ifs and build in that next state of contingencies because again my North Star is to make sure that Oregon voters have the certainty of accurate elections by June 13th. So I saw a couple more hands come back up. Uh, we're running really low on time. I, I want to jump to to Dirk, who's the first hand I see who hasn't already had a chance to answer, and then I think we're going to have to wrap up over that after that. Um, and I can I can take additional questions over email or or over the phone. Dirk, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, uh, just a really quick question. In chatting with Representative Bynum, one question she had was, if we're having all these uh, county workers and election worker or uh, county workers come to help with this, you know, as I understand the duplication process, it's typically two different people of different parties. So are we, pair, one, are we requiring public staff to disclose their party affiliation and then pairing them up? Like it, that has not been clear to me. I'm not sure if I've, maybe I've missed it, but I just haven't seen that piece explained. So that's that's a good question for the county. The county administrator is the one doing all of that. But in short, um, you know, for the for the transparency, folks wear a certain color of lanyard to indicate whether they are Republican, Democrat, nonpartisan, independent party, et cetera, so that anybody viewing can see can see folks um, that are of, of, of the same that are of different parties. Um, and you know what what somebody's voter registration is 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 a public record. And so I don't know that it's a disclosing of it so much as it's it's a publicly available information that the county has. But again, you'll have to ask the kind of the details of how that's working. Um, and they're, you know, they worked closely with their HR, obviously, to make sure that everything was was legal over there. But that's that's a good question for the county, the exact details of how they're working that out. Okay, thanks, Secretary. All right. Thanks everyone for for doing this. We we really appreciate uh, your time. Um, we uh, we have to take off at this point. If there are follow up questions, please do not hesitate to shoot me an email or give me a call. Uh, maybe not all at once, uh, but um, the recording of the video will be available shortly. I think we'll just probably send it out via press release once we have a chance to upload it to our our YouTube site and our file sharing site. So expect that coming through soon. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting now. I'll see you all later. Bye. Thanks, everyone.